What is up guys, Rick Hackus here, and we're asking the big question today, is the Taken King DLC worth buying for Destiny? Now we're going to be looking at both the pros and the cons in a completely non-biased fashion. We're just looking objectively at this DLC, what it offers, and again coming to the conclusion whether or not it's worth buying for the average Destiny player. Now if you find this video at all helpful or informative, please remember to rate and share the video, that really really helps me out. But without further ado, let's get started. Again, I'm looking at this at a completely non-biased, objective point of view. Now who am I to make this decision and to end up telling you guys whether or not to buy this DLC? Well. Honestly, I'm probably one of Destiny's toughest critics. I have made a lot of videos criticizing Bungie's decisions in the past. In addition, many viewers are worried about YouTubers having a pre-existing kind of under the table relationship with the developer. It's hard to be objective when you're flown out to a nice hotel and your meals are paid for and then you get to play content exclusively and early and have a really fun time and fly back. Like who's gonna have a bad time? Now I'm not trying to insult the integrity of the people who do do that, but that sort of thing is a very common marketing technique used by companies to get the best reviews possible. Well guys, my pre-existing relationship with Bungie is literally zero. Deej and Bungie don't even reply to my tweets, let alone invite me to shit. So I am looking at this completely objectively. As a Destiny player, just like you, I haven't got to play any of this content early, I'm not getting any of it early, none of that stuff. I am looking at it as one of you. Now let's get started with the pros. What are the good things that the Taken King DLC offers? Now the first big pro, and I think this is probably like the biggest thing about the Taken King in my opinion, is that they have completely revamped the loot system. And I really do mean completely. Every weapon in the game as you know it has essentially been changed. Like down to the greens, the weapons are now redone with this new foundry system. The new foundries are Hawkeye, Omelon, and Suros. And aside from some exceptions, most of the weapons you're going to acquire will fit into one of these three categories. There's obviously a lot of customization within one of these categories, like let's say it's just Suros. There's obviously still going to be, with for example Suros Scout Rifles, there's still going to be a ton of different differentiation within there. You know, right now, as we have it in the game of Destiny without the Taken King, uh, Scout Rifles are basically broken up to different categories due to their rate of fire and impact. Impact. There's only about four different categories of rate of fire and impact and then within those categories There's uh, different changes to you know reload speed stability range and magazine size So there's still gonna be those differences within for example Suro scout rifles like I've been talking about so you have Suro scout rifles that have higher rate of fires and lower impact and the opposite and then there's some in the middle So we're gonna see a lot of customization and differentiation again within just Suros but apart from that the other foundries have differentiating factors as well. They have different perk layouts, different perks that they can get within those layouts. So there is a huge amount of customization coming into the game with the Taken King. This gun system, as it appears, looks like a massive, massive improvement in terms of customization and variety when compared to the original Destiny gun system. Now what's another positive factor? Well it's just the amount of content added. For example, the House of Wolves added one strike, which is now I think about it really really sad, but the Taken King is adding I think three or four new strikes and on top of that, on top of that, three or four other strikes are being remade with the Taken as enemies. And uh, there's also a massive strike improvements, like I made a video dedicated entirely to what Bungie have talked about with strike improvements, but essentially sometimes when you fight uh, certain portions of the strike it's going to be Cabal, and then the other times it's going to be Taken, and maybe it's Hive. And not only that, but the composition of the enemies might change. So more strikes than ever are being added, and the ones that are being added are more replayable than ever, and the boss fights look absolutely insane, and they've really listened to the community about boss fights no longer are these massive hulking bullet sponges coming out they actually kind of die relatively quickly in comparison to the other bosses in the game but they also have really interesting mechanics like the jetpack at you and try to punch you rather than just stand there shooting at you so the content added in terms of strikes and missions is very very good 
Now continuing on with the content added, they're actually finally adding new playable spaces so you can have, you know, new bounties and patrol modes and, and all this stuff occurring on the Dreadnought, which again is a new playable space. So it's essentially like adding a new planet. That's something we haven't had in either of the other DLCs. So that's another great thing. On top of that, just talking about legendary weapons, tons more legendary uh, armor and weapons are being added into the game. Uh, six new armor pieces per class, I think the number is, and 12 plus new exotic weapons. So that's all fantastic as opposed to, you know, there was only a measly three added with the House of Wolves and those all were only acquirable through the Elder Cipher. So once you kind of did that, you were just done. Now there's going to be a bunch more exotics added just to the straight loot table. So playing the game normally will get you these exotics and not just doing one activity over and over and over again. So that's all good news as well. Apart from that, there's also a bunch of little things that definitely are worth mentioning because there's so many tweaks and kind of smaller changes that are going to improve things for the better and they really do matter in terms of playing Destiny. For example, bounties. You can hold more bounties. The bounties are changed so that they're more interactive. Doing all of the bounties offered by an NPC will unlock a special new bounty that you can do for special rewards and all of this kind of little things and small tweaks based on player feedback add up into an overall much better experience. Alright, so that certainly sounds good, but it's not all pros. Now let's move on to the cons and the number one con is definitely 40 bucks. 40 bucks is a lot. 40 bucks is two thirds of an entire game. So why is this DLC so expensive and is it worth that much money? Now the funny thing is Bungie kind of screwed themselves over with the pricing of the previous DLCs. Compared to the House of Wolves, Taken King has honestly like five times, maybe more the content than the House of Wolves, which is 20 bucks. So wouldn't that automatically make it worth buying the Taken King for 40 bucks? Well, the thing is, people have such a bad taste in their mouth from the previous two DLCs because in all honesty, the House of Wolves and the Dark Below were not worth 20 bucks. They That definitely charged a premium for those two DLCs and they weren't really worth a premium, especially the Dark Below, that should have been a $15 DLC. There's no reason that was 20 bucks and Bungie also called those expansions and those were really hardly expansions. The Taken King is a true expansion. But again, Bungie was riding their own hype train so much for the previous two DLCs that people are now extra wary and extra cautious when it comes to the Taken King. It's hard to take Bungie seriously when they're referring to the Taken King as actually an expansion. We've actually created an expansion. It's like, alright Luke Smith, that's great, but wh why did you call the other ones expansions then? If they weren't expansions and the Taken King is a true expansion, why did you call the other two DLCs expansions? It's just kind of like Bungie's hype train and Bungie's marketing. Whoever is running the Bungie marketing department is doing a fantastic job, but they're doing too well of a job. And now that we've actually seen the finished products in the other two DLCs, we've seen that Bungie hype does not equalize always into Bungie product. But to be quite honest with you guys, that's why I really do think that the Taken King is worth buying. The first two DLCs were shams. There is a lot of evidence that points to this content was already on the disc and that Bungie last minute or Activision, either one of them, saw a chance for extra profit, removed this content, changed it a little bit and shipped it as DLCs. And I really do believe this, that once Bungie or Activision saw that Destiny was launching essentially unopposed, they really decided to fill the gap between Taken King and the original Destiny launch with these other two DLCs and that's where a lot of the problems with this game arise. But again, that actually makes the Taken King better. I believe that again, the first two DLCs should have been at the disc and could have been on the disc at launch. But this DLC wasn't. The Taken King was always supposed to be the massive expansion pack that Bungie wanted. It was probably Activision pulling the strings here and Bungie probably didn't want to go along with it. This DLC, the Taken King, again I think was planned to really carry Destiny into year 2 and the future. The Taken King, in my opinion, is worth $40 because it almost is a new game. 
once you install that DLC, you're not really going to be playing Destiny anymore. You're going to be playing, you know, Year 2 Destiny. The game will be completely different. And again, I just have to point to the loot system. Completely revamping the entire loot system is going to make the game feel so different again. It's basically going to be as if you started a new character. You're level 1 again. You're experiencing all this loot and all this content like it's never been experienced before. My best time in Destiny was level up my first character like how fun was it L try to think way back when you first bought the game your first character you know uh, comparing all these green weapons and finding your first blue and finding your second blue and like getting your first purple again those are your best moments those are my most fun moments I ever had playing destiny and honestly it seems like it's going to be just like that again when you install the taken king you're restarting everything you're pressing a reset button and you're saying we are completely changing the game moving forward and we're moving destiny forward drastically into the future so again guys my final conclusion is that yes the taken king dlc is definitely worth it if you are still enjoying destiny unless you live in the uk because activision those greedy fuckers are charging 40 pounds for the dlc and that's equivalent to 60 dollars us so activision you greedy fucking company cut that shit out because that's not fair to uk gamers that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, again, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe if you want to see Destiny content similar to this. If you want to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter. It's going to be linked in the description of this video, as is my Twitch channel. You can follow me on there as well. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, have a good day.